Okay, here we go. Welcome. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are here. We're just going to wait for a few people to pop on. I am on both um, Instagram Live and YouTube at the same time. Call me crazy, but we're going to see how this goes. So if you're following along, um, if you saw my video on Thursday, I talked about how you can rekindle the artist in you. Um, I'm starting this new series um, so that I can help you get back into the passion of art um, that you may have set aside for some time. So um, this week I'm talking about multi-passionate artists and how you can become a focused, passionate artist, um, which I believe is attainable. Um, a lot of times multi-passionate artists are all over the place. We have our hands kind of in all kinds of different places. Maybe one week we want to make stickers and the next week we want um, to work with gouache and then the next week we want to work with um, acrylic, and we're kind of all over the place. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but this focus um, passionate artist is taking the idea that you can focus on your top three things that you want to work on, and you can really get skilled um, with those. So let's see, just welcoming people in. So give me just a second. Okay. All right. So, um, so if you haven't seen the video from Thursday, please go back and um, watch that. I go over um, the first two steps on how to become a focus, passionate artist. Um, so just to recap, the first one was to brainstorm um, in a journal. Um, I use an art journal. I carry this around wherever I go, um, usually um, in my bag, so that um, I can always refresh, um, look, kind of look and see what things I'm doing, um, and I can refocus. Or if I'm out and about and I get a new idea, then I'll jot it down. So I use the Erin Condren um, Take Note book. Um, it's Take Note. It's just a standard dot grid notebook. Um, I don't know if they still have this one available, but if they do, I will link it in the replay video um, so that you guys can go check it out. I also take around my um, awesome um, planner for my business. It's my business planner and it's from um, Tatiana Muse, um, the Inspire Blueprint. So I'll put her link down below too. But these are the two things that I take around with me. Um, all the time. They're always with me so that I can jot down any ideas and also keep up on my goals and things for my business. So that's one way to keep yourself focused if you're a multi-passionate person. Brainstorm all of those ideas, um, get them down on paper. And if you have a new idea, add it to the brainstorming list. It's a no brainer, right? Um, and then you always have those ideas in one place. So I know that I can go grab this notebook and I'm not searching for um, another random notebook or another random sticky note or something like that. And the second thing I talked about in that video um, was just figuring out what supplies that you need for the top three. So once you brainstorm, you come up with your top three. Once you come up with your top three, then you figure out what supplies you have on hand. This does not mean you have to go out and buy a bunch of supplies. Just use what you have on hand. Um, but it also is great because then when you go shopping, you know that you just need to buy things based on those top three. Um, I don't know about you, but I get distracted in an art store. So many times I think, ooh, that looks so uh, pretty or, oh, that looks like fun and I want to try that out. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can um, explore and discover new products, but it definitely helps me stay on budget and um, just focus on those top three things. Um, so today I'm going to do a little deep dive into my third tip. So my third tip is discipline. And nobody likes to hear that word, discipline. But we do need an art discipline. Um, but I like to change this up a bit so that we're not using the word discipline, which 
some people just don't like, right? Um, but change it to consistency. So if you have consistency with those top three, then you are good. All right. Just watching people come in. So, um, so yeah, so, um, this consistency is a dedicated time that you have to those top three things that you're working on. Um, and you can have an extension off of those top three. Um, but it's, it's basically dedicating time that you can hone in and really get good at those top three skills that you want to work on. Um, so in my brainstorming, for example, um, I like to create stickers. So I might, my focus and my dedication and my consistency is in working on my pen and ink, watercolor, and mixed media skills. But that doesn't mean that I can't make stickers out of those things if I want to. So there can be extensions off of those top three. But the idea is that you, um, uh, you take those top three and you really um, hone in and focus on those um, as you work through those practices. Now, I do have some notes over here because um, I just want to point out that sometimes this is where an artist will check out, right? Because um, sure, I can brainstorm. Sure, I can come up with my top three. But wait, you want me to be consistent? Because I have all of these amazing ideas, Maria, and I can't, you know, just put myself, confine, confine myself into this little box, into just doing these top three. But that's where um, you can have those extensions, but the still coming off of those top three. Trust me, it works. Um, I have dabbled in all kinds of things. My hands were, you know, creating notebooks and creating watercolor journals and things like that. And I still enjoy those types of things, but it has allowed me to really um, focus and become better skilled at these top three. So my top three are watercolor, pen and ink, and mixed media. Those are my top three. Um, and it really has helped me to figure out what I'm truly passionate about and wh what I really want to focus on. Now, I talked about this in my last video, but there are some artists who are focused on one thing and they get really good at it. I have a friend and she does crochet. Um, she crochets little animals and um, little things. And she has a thriving business off of that one art skill um, that she has honed in on. I have an, another friend who she only does acrylic. Um, they are very successful, um, but they are also not multi-passionate artists. Um, multi-passionate artists are usually artists who have lots of different ideas that they want to try out. So this is just going to help you focus. But the thing is, is that you really want your work to have quality. And in order for it to have quality, then you do need to um, spend time and consistency in those things so that you can get better at it. So I really recommend that you spend three months on these top three. And if you find that one is not working out great, or maybe you don't like it as well as you thought you would, then go back to your brainstorming page and switch it out. But give it three months um, to really see, you know, what you think and 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 how it's working out for you. Because you might find that you absolutely love it. Um, but if you find that you're struggling with the medium or things like that, after three months, you you can start. You will start getting better at something, um, being consistent and working at it over time. So um, just trust me that it really works um, because you will start to build this body or this collection of work. Um, I also recommend that you s start small, you know, grab, um, grab a sketchbook so you're not so intimidated with, you know, these top three and what you're doing. Um, or maybe your top three is... Um, one of them is creating stickers. And so maybe you want to, um, you have an iPad, you want to work in Procreate, you want to make those stickers and you want to produce um, stickers, give it, give it some time. Um, and also if you're going to sell them, then that's a whole nother ball game. We can talk about that another time, but, but again, it's the same thing, honing in on those top three. Um, all right. So, and also remember that it's okay to ebb and flow. Um, so if, 
if one of those um, isn't working out, but you're really finding that the other two are, again, just stick with it and give it some time um, and dedicate that time and consistently. So, you know, maybe every um, Thursday evening, if you work full time, maybe every Thursday evening you can work on um, one or two of those top three or all three of them, however that works out for you. Um, maybe on Monday, you work on your first one, Wednesday, you work on your second one and Friday, you work on your third one, something like that. Just schedule out your time so that it's consistent and continue to do that for three months. All right. So, um, so let's see here. Let's, let's take some questions. See if we have any questions that pop up on Instagram or on uh, YouTube. And while you're typing in those questions, I'm going to um, tell you a story while those come in. So as a multi-passionate artist, um, I have been in situations where I'm juggling a lot of projects. And um, I started to realize that I was lacking in quality because I was dabbling in lots of different things. So the quality of my art wasn't as great because I wasn't honing in or focusing in on certain or specific ones. Um, and so I and so I was having a hard time. So this is when I brainstormed, came up with my top three and really focused on them. It also allowed me to know what to say no to. Um, a lot of times people will be like, oh, you're an artist here. Can you commit? Can you draw this? I'll commission you for it. Can you do this? Can you do that? And it wasn't necessarily something that I enjoyed or was comfortable with or would um, would have a lot of, you know, extra knowledge about or something like that. And then I would have to research it and then, you know, do the project. Um, and uh, so now I have really figured out what I'm going to have on my website, what I'm going to offer as commissions, um, and what I'm going to say no to. Um, and then also, um, it has really helped me to focus on art supplies. I mentioned this a little bit, a uh, little bit ago, but I know that when I go to the art store that I'm going to be looking at micron pins, um, watercolor, uh, pans or paints if I need to refill, which I already have them. So it would be like a refill kind of situation. Um, I know what inks and things I use for my mixed media. Um, so again, it's not that I can't try something new. You definitely can, but I can't, I don't, I get less distracted by all the other art supplies. And if you're an artist, you know what I mean. All right. And then just, um, a little, uh, a bonus tip to this story is that, um, I have really been able to um, define who I am as an artist based on these top three. So I know that I'm an artist and illustrator from Indiana, and I work in my home studio with watercolor, pen and ink, and mixed media. Like, I know that. I have defined myself as an artist based on my top three. So once you have figured out your top three, like you're golden. You can market yourself. You can get yourself out there. You know what to say yes to. You know what to say no to. So that's kind of my story and how I've come about this um, whole idea. Um, so I don't see... I don't see a lot of questions, but I had a question from the other day that I'm going to answer. Um, and someone asked, can you combine ideas? Yes, you can definitely combine ideas. So for example, if you, um, if you are interested in doing acrylic, but maybe you want to sell some prints, for example, um, acrylic is the medium that you're doing and you're going to combine that with making them into prints and selling them. So you can kind of combine them that way. I combine two mediums. So I combine pen and ink and watercolor, which then it, uh, it's an ink and wash process. It's also considered mixed media because you're mixing two mediums together. Um, and so, yes, you can definitely combine ideas um, to come up with your top three. Another idea is that, um, so I do the watercolor journaling. And if you haven't seen any of those videos, please go check them out. Um, but I really enjoy watercolor journaling. 
um, it gives me a safe place that I can go and kind of experiment and um, I can jot down memories and things like that through my watercolor. Um, but I'd love to teach a workshop. So I'm in the process of putting a workshop together that I would like to sell on my website. And this, again, is combining um, a couple of those brainstorming ideas. So you can definitely do that. Um, and another question that I jotted down, uh, what if I get bored? Um, so if you have these top three and you're working on them for three months um, and you feel like you're starting to get bored, um, you can definitely switch one out. And I had said that before, but keep this in mind for a multi-passionate artist. We are usually excited about more than one medium, or we're excited about uh, more than one, you know, uh, art venture that we would like to, um, art journey that we would like to go down. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. So that's why I'm telling you guys to focus on your top three and not your top one. If I said focus on your top one, I would probably, you'd be like, are you out of your mind? Because it's harder for a multi-passionate artist to focus on just one thing. And I know that from experience. Um, and so if I can focus on my top three, you definitely can too. And if you're feeling that you're starting to get a little bit bored with something, then maybe that's not one of your top three. And then you can re you can go back to your brainstorming page and you can figure out what that is for you. Um, and two, if you find that you just want to focus on your top two, um, and those are the things that you want to do, then do it. That's totally fine. There's no like hardcore rules to any of this. It's just really helping you to focus. And this focus, passionate artist idea, I totally made that up. Um, I, uh, I totally made up that term. I just thought that it made sense because when you're multi-passionate about art, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it's just kind of taking it at a different angle and saying, I'm going to be a little more focused and a little more intentional about the art that I am going to make, because then I'm going to have great quality work that I can sell, produce, teach, that kind of thing. Um, and you become more knowledgeable and more comfortable about those top three art mediums or art techniques or um, art projects that you are working on. Um, yeah, so I think that is about it. One last thing, don't forget to write your new ideas down in your um, art journal that you have, or if you have a planner, business planner, that you can jot ideas down. I highly recommend that you do that. It has really helped me out. And on my pages too, I'll put like, um, let's see if I can find one. I will put washi tape along the side if I want to um, remember something. So here's some barn painting ideas that I'm working on and I put some washi tape there that I can, so that I can find it. I'll make, um, I'll use washi tapes uh, to kind of section some things off um, and also, you know, just decorating it and making it look um, nice on the inside. You can have fun, have fun with that. Um, Let's see, I need to be fair to both cameras. But here's the washi tape. Um, and then just sectioning it off, you know, with big fonts, big letters. I always title my pages too and jot little notes down and things like that. So yeah, I really feel like this consistency and this discipline will really help you to um, grow in your art practice. And that's really what rekindling the artist in you is all about. It is about rekindling that spark. It is about rekindling that. Let me wave just a second. It's about rekindling that spark that you have about art. Um, it's about finding that passion that you love and going after it and being excited about it. And when you can focus on those top three things, you can really grow in your art practice. So, yeah. All right. Well, um, I know that was short, but I do want to encourage you to join me next Friday. I am going to um, go live again at noon and I'm going to talk about overwhelm, 
versus discovery. So when you start to get into the different mediums, um, maybe you're working on, you know, digital art, maybe you're working on <clears throat> watercolor, and you're finding it to be a little overwhelming because it's new to you or something like that. Um, this is going to be about discovery. So I'm going to put a video out on Thursday and then I'm going to go live on Friday, just like I did this week. And I'm going to continue this series throughout the month of May. So if you would like to meet me here every Friday at noon, it will probably be just about 20 or 30 minutes of our time, depending on how many questions I get and how many people join and that kind of thing. So Thank you so much for joining me. I so appreciate you being here. And I am going to post this video on YouTube so that you can rewatch it if you would like. And if you have any questions, you can also put the questions below in the replay on YouTube. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to say goodbye to uh, Instagram first. Thank you so much for everyone who joined me. Um, and be sure to come back next week. All right. Bye. Okay, and for all of my uh, YouTube um, peeps out there, just thank you so much for being with me in my very first live. Thank you for sticking in there with me, and um, I'm hoping that it will get easier over time, but you um, definitely have to start somewhere, right? All right, thanks for joining me, and until next time, bye!